So it's been almost three years since my last video. I haven't stepped foot on a golf course until about six months ago either. Um, so after such a long period in time, I think I do deserve it to you, the viewers, the people who used to watch my channel. Um, I need to give you an explanation why. Yesterday we arrived at PJ Catalunya and this week is the opening of the Golf Hub Complex. So they got two studios there, they got Top Tracer on all the bays of the driving range. Um, amazing huge flat grass driving range all the way out into the distance. It looked awesome this morning with a mist sort of like covering over the back of it. And the hotel we stayed in, um, as you saw there, is 
pretty incredible, to be honest. It is by far and away the nicest hotel I've ever stayed in in my life. So just being just being here at this place is an amazing experience, uh, not to mention what's gonna happen tomorrow, which I'm extremely nervous for. Um, this is my sort of behind the scenes documentation of um, this whole trip. Uh, so it's gonna be one long vlog. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Um, it's gonna be relatively interesting, lots of behind the scenes stuff, filming with different people, but going out on the golf course, Seven Golf is here, Silas Wagner's here, he runs a German YouTube channel. But this is gonna be my last video of 2018, and I kinda just wanna talk over everything that's happened this year, and the hard work, and everything it's sort of taken to get here, and this one trip at the end of the year, um, because it's December and it, we're coming up to the new year and there's some cool, you know, there's some amazing prospects for next year and opportunities. I just want to talk through, I just really want to talk through this year and explain to you guys, you know, how much hard work it's taken to build a channel to this level. Um, sort of thank you all for helping me get to this level and getting the content, getting the content out there. It's, um... 2018 has been by far and away the craziest year of my entire life and um, this is really the video I want to finish on. Yeah, and again, just a massive thank you to every one of you who has supported me this year and helped me get to this stage. Um, yeah, I, I honestly can't thank you enough. So we just arrived at the Golf Hub, which is the complex you can see behind me here. Um, we're going to go and have a little bit of a warm up, a much needed warm up, before we go out and play the stadium course. This is. Oh no, it's not Zilas. I thought you were Zilas then for a minute, Michael. Where's Zilas gone? There he is over there. The top traces on each bay here. A couple of studios in there, which looks pretty cool. And over here, make sure you go and check out this guy's channel. Since like, how long have you watched a, you, my YouTube channel for? Oh, since several years, like six years ago, the first videos. When the videos weren't sponsor friendly, Yeah. basically. <laughs> but make sure you go and check out Zilas' channel. I'll put a link in that in the description. As long as you understand German. Yeah, as long as you understand German. That's, a, that's the main problem, I guess. <laughs> So we're just finishing up here on the driving range and then we're heading over to the short game area. We're gonna do some, uh, a little bit of a short game warm up before we go out. Uh, and then we're coming back to the driving range to have a go on Gears Golf in the studio over there, um, which is gonna be quite interesting to maybe look at a few things in the swing. Not just mine, but Zilas, Michael, and Seb's getting here in a bit as well. So should be an interesting session. I might make that into a separate video. So um, the stuff you see now, maybe just sort of behind the scenes stuff off the phone. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be interesting to see how um, how wild my swing really is. So on the short game area here, it's quite interesting. They've got is it four different bunkers, Michael? Four different four different bunkers with four different types of sand. This is the volcanic bunker. So am I right inside? I, I still need outside information on this because I'm not like quite clued up. I haven't played abroad that much, so I played out of different types of sand. Just saying to Michael when I played the Carlo Golf Resort, it was like broken up seashells and stones and it is nothing like hitting out the sand and this kind of looks the same but it's a little bit sort of browner and then if we go over to the other bunkers this stuff here is the really fine powdery type sand um, which is generally what we kind of see in the UK and in this bunker we got more of a beachy type sand so the beigey sort of colored stuff you might have have back home not quite as powdery as the other bunker I really want to come and live in Spain. So many more different situations you can put yourself in around these greens and it's just an amazing complex. It's just a shame we don't have the weather back in the UK to sustain a, a facility like this through the winter.
that's so weird. You can catch like any stones between your golf club and just shoot it can shoot it either way. I'm about to try and replicate Tiger Woods on the 16th at the Masters with this slope because I'm on his level. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. That's mad. Go. Yeah. Yeah, he has got roughly about 200 yards down in lie. It sounded very good, slightly right off target. In the bunker, short, short right in the bunker. So currently just on the third hole, made a good par on the first after chunking two irons. Um, I made a really good two putt from the front of the green. Um, putting's feeling quite good so now. Outside, yeah, yeah, go for it, man. It's fine. Yeah, playing 2019 rules, which is different. The old knee-high drop is going to be a few of them today. But currently on the third hole, I've just I absolutely nailed a drive down there, like 320. I can feel it's flippy. It's not the swing I'm trying to make, but. Just trying to take what feels natural to the golf course at the moment and just reinforce the feelings during practice sessions so um i just hit mine just right at the green it's in the bunker i think and i've got no green to work with so this should be quite an interesting little bunker shot Ooh, tasty up and down not the easiest is it well make sure you catch the sand first i'd say <laughs> i like I, to be honest i land in the rough I mean. whose ball is that this one on the on the fringe. Yeah, you're right to mark it. Is that right? Yeah, I take it off, or I take it away. That is lovely. Take that every day. Well played, mate. Very good. Very good indeed. And how is it for a uh, five? For a four, or for the win. I saw how much Michael's broke. Oh, in the middle! Get in! So this is the 11th hole here at Catalonia and it's quite spectacular. It's incredible. It's playing like two clubs downhill.
Why is everything always such a mess? Okay. Just got back from having dinner, um, which is pretty cool because I got to meet Vinnie O'Connor who does a lot of presenting for Sky Sports. Um, so it's good to meet him. Also, Seb on golf today was here. It's good to meet him because I've watched his videos over the past couple of years as well. Um, real enjoyable evening. It's great to have some engaging conversation from people from the same industry. Don't get a lot of it from where I live because um, I live out in the sticks down in the southwest of the country. Um, for people who live in England, they'll know it's Exeter, but for people outside of England, it's basically the southwest of the country. It is quite out in the sticks. It's not a built up area, it's not like London. You don't have a lot of people who do the kind of thing which I do. Um, so it's always great to come away on these trips and have some really engaging conversations with people and you definitely learn a lot of stuff. Um, I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm sat here at the moment and this is why I wanted to make this sort of 20 minute documentary and behind the scenes of this whole trip. And it's, um, this trip's kind of, uh, I've led me to tonight and just sitting down and really having an honest chat with you guys about the channel really and, and where we are now compared to where we are last year, all the things which have happened in the last year, which is, it has been one crazy, crazy year. Um, obviously the birth of my child and the grind with YouTube, you know, you guys don't see the you know the thousands of hours which has been done this year behind behind the camera and behind the laptop and it's been a very very full-on year a lot of work a lot of practicing golf knowing near as much as I should be but I'm not gonna be able to do that until I have a cameraman and an editor That's something I want to talk in a little bit deeper as well in a minute but it's just amazing the opportunities which have arised this year and I'm honestly so grateful for it. I never thought that last year I would be in this position. Um, I'm, doing a, I'm doing an in the bag and a short interview with Sergio tomorrow, Sergio Garcia. Um, to me, it's just completely crazy, like it's... It's, it's crazy, like I was, walk I was walking out by reception earlier about to go and have dinner with a great group of people and Sergio's there just like casually checking into the hotel and it's like I'm kind of I'm there and I'm scratching my head and I'm like is this how crazy life has become in the space of 12 months um, just the, and the prospects of where I could be in the next year um, with YouTube is insane but I'm forever in this at the moment and I know this isn't going to be permanent I'm constantly stuck in this middle ground of like, am I a YouTuber or am I a professional golfer? And the answer to that is, is this is a this is something which has been bugging me the whole time, ever since I started YouTube again, ever since I started golf again, is that one doesn't work without the other. I will always stick with the same incentive that my main goal is to reach my potential as a golfer and play at the highest level possible. On the other hand, I'm not going to be able to do that without YouTube. I can't play golf full time and not do YouTube because YouTube is now my full time job, believe it or not. Like it's in insane to think that in a year it's gone from being, you know, to try and get myself out there to sponsors and to reach new opportunities and new people and meet the right people. But I never thought that would actually happen over a 12 year period and it, it, it's mental to now be sat here and, and have had all these opportunities come along and the opportunity which I have, you know, this week and all the travel which has gone on, the people I've met, it's crazy. But like I was saying, anyway, I'm rambling on, I know, but I, I just wanted a moment to be honest with you all, the people who do watch this channel and are really interested in my career. Golf doesn't work without YouTube and YouTube doesn't work without golf. I've got to be good at golf to make good YouTube videos, kind of. And I've got to be good at YouTube to get myself in a position where I can have the team behind me that I need to go far in golf. I just want to clarify, because this, this is the last video of 2019, and you know, I, I want to really clarify my, my sort of thought process behind the direction of which the channel is going and how are we going to get there, because a lot of people don't understand that. Like, well, you know we're near good enough, and I, trust me, I know I'm nowhere near good enough at the moment. I know that. I watch my golf on a daily basis back on video. I feel the shots which I'm hitting. I, you know, I, 
I know that my golf is not there yet, but that's because <laughs> everything is being put into YouTube at the moment. You know, this in the last week I've spent one day practicing. Um, and it's been, to be honest, it's been like that for the whole year, although it may look to you guys like I practice and, and train a lot, it isn't that much, you know, it isn't that much. I spend the majority of my time behind a camera and behind a computer. Um, that will change. I need a cameraman and an editor who can go to golf tournaments with me, who can come on, you know, practice days with me or come on the golf course with me, film and edit the videos and upload them for me. I need to have a cameraman and an editor which I can pay to do that so I can completely and utterly focus on golf. Because these guys who are there, they are completely obsessed with golf. They're putting in their hallway in the evening, they're putting in the countless hours of being obsessed, constantly learning new things, and I'm trying to juggle like two professions here. I'm trying to juggle YouTube as a profession, I'm trying to juggle playing golf as a profession. You really can't do both. So I'm kind of left in this middle ground. Don't know how long it's gonna last. With the way things are going, it might last like another year. Um, but one thing's for sure is YouTube has, although the golf hasn't been great, or I've learned a hell of a lot, YouTube has just blown up and I'm, I'm so grateful, for, I'm literally so grateful for it, like coming on these trips is a massive eye opener and makes me realise how far we've come and I kind of want to end 2019 on that positive note um, rather than dwelling on the golf not being so good. You know, I was playing better when I was 14, but the reason I was playing better when I was 14 was because... I was obsessed with the game, it's all I did, it's all I knew. And I've got to get to that point again. But I feel like these videos are gonna be the the core and the root of the entire story. That's the goal. So I feel like having these personal conversations with you guys is also part of the part of the entire process. And you know, if golf doesn't work out, I've got YouTube as a backup and you guys are gonna get some pretty insane content if that happens a few years down the line. So, you know, I plan to give this as long as I possibly can. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify, and I've been meaning to have this chat for ages, to be honest. Um, and, like, I never thought I'd be writing out this. What's in the bag with Sergio Garcia set, set in camera setup? And, like, I've typed out this schedule to do uh, in the bag. Like, I never thought I'd, like, I mean, I believed that I'd meet Sergio Garcia at some point, but then when it actually happens, like 12 months down the line after you're thinking these things, it's like, okay, this has happened seriously quick. I'm a little bit nervous for tomorrow, um, but really, really excited at the same time um, to not only find out what's in this bag, but to also ask him some quite in-depth questions. So I'll try and push it as much as I can and get as many questions in as I can. Um, a few questions which you guys have asked. Um, which are relatively quick fire ones and then a couple of deeper ones which which I want to ask about but it is 11.52 uh, I'll be up in seven hours from now I've got to pack tidy up clean my golf clubs clean my golf shoes and get to sleep tea in the morning So it's the morning of the filming. Uh, Sergio's just over on the range at the moment. He's gonna get done there. We're gonna go out on the golf course and play down 13, which is the signature hole here. So hopefully get some really good footage of that. And then it's my turn to come back and film with Sergio. A little bit nervous, not gonna lie. But on another note, the visibility this morning is a lot better. Yesterday there was quite a lot of mist, which was quite cool for some camera angles and we got some good footage, but we got the nice mountain backdrop this morning, which is looking, well, I'll show you. Camera doesn't really do it that much justice, but it looks absolutely stunning out here today, so. which the viewers have asked. One was, what was your handicap when you were 16? When I was 16, uh, I think I was probably uh, somewhere around plus four, plus five, I think. That's pretty insane. <laughs> That's pretty insane. You and your foundation, 
are doing an amazing job with the kids and, and actually uh, with the disabled people. Thank you very much. Enrique will be showcasting gears with one of the best swings in the world. Thank you very much. Uh, give us the numbers about the ball flag. Okay, it's really good for you know what happened with the, the cafes and golf attack and swing bath. It's a lot, a lot of good things. You know? And uh, to the left side we, we have gears. It's a 3D system. It's a biomechanic system for you know what happened with the body. You know the, the eight cameras on the top take all information about the sensors and give us one avatar of the player. You know, this, with, uh, this avatar, we can recognize the swing. In this system, we can ignore all data in all swing. Even uh, the different parts in the, the beginning, in the takeaway, on the top, in the impact. This is great for study, for improve, for see what they need to work for uh, make uh, better shots. Okay, now I think it's nice to see one driver. Okay, do you like to see one driver? Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show us the fate now? Hey? Only for the system to see the difference. Hey. Will you try to favour, like if you have your stock shot, will you always try and really hit that stock shot unless you really have to? Are you quite comfortable having to, like for example the 13th at Augusta where most people try and draw it round, do you like to hit a short shot into the corner or will you shape well, it? Well, I mean it, it depends, it, it all depends on how you feel. Uh, obviously, ideally, on a hole like that, a dog like so much, you, you want to try to get a little bit of a draw. Uh, but sometimes you're not comfortable so you might kind of aim towards the left side and try to maybe hit a little straighter if you, know, you cut it a little bit and you hit it just on the right side of the fairway, it's, it's fine. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's all, it's all feel and uh, it just depends on you know, how you're feeling that day. Comprehend if you feel really comfortable then you can hit the shot then, then you'll, uh, you'll obviously try it. If you're, if you're having a bad day on the golf course, say you're not striking it great, how do you go about managing your swing? Do you change anything to sort of help manage the situation, if you know no, what I mean? I think uh, um, when I try, to, I try to go to my stock shot, to, to my, yeah. comfortable, uh, my comfortable shot, uh, which would be a little fade. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just try to, you know, if I start early, I try to go to that get a little bit of confidence back uh, and then, you know, if, if, if I manage to do that, then I get going. But, you know, sometimes you have bad days and, and you know, yeah. whatever you do, it's, it's, it's just that the players are... To be, to be able to help, but you just, uh, you just try to go back to, to what feels the most comfortable and, and uh, kind of try to manage the, the day as, uh, as well as possible. Then I think that Something that people don't realize, uh, obviously, for good players, I mean, everybody is on tour and stuff. When we're playing well, any any one of us can shoot eight or nine under. Yeah. Anyone on tour can do it. I think the difference, the biggest difference between a really good player and a good player is that when they're not playing well, they don't shoot too bad a score. So they're not. The game is not quite on, you shoot 70, 71, 72, yeah. instead of shooting 77. Yeah. And that's, or 75. 
and that's the that's the big difference. The bad rounds are <laughs> decent, yeah. They're not, and, and then the good rounds are good rounds. Yeah. Where, I mean, when, when we're playing well, everything's going to have a flag, and you know everything seems easy. But it's just a matter of managing those those days that things are not going quite as well, and making sure that yeah, instead of shooting 75, you're shooting 72 or 71, and yeah. you know you, you're not moving too far back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.